We're not looking for charity. We're looking for justice. And it was a beautiful day. Bono asked, and the world responded. It was a heartwarming story. All the nations of the world getting together with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to reduce the debts crushing the poorest nations on Earth and killing their people. It all looked good. Then down swooped the vultures, who bought up the debt cheaply and then squeezed these poor countries to pay them ten times what the speculators originally paid for the debts. Five years ago, Gordon Brown told the United Nations that the vultures were perverse and immoral. We particularly condemn the perversity where vulture funds purchase debt at a reduced price and make a profit from suing the debtor country to recover the full amount owed, a morally outrageous outcome. Yet today, the vultures are still demanding huge payoffs. One of them expects to win $40 million this week from Zambia. We thought we'd track him down. We set out on our vulture hunt by going to their natural habitat, Washington, D.C. to make sure our troops have what it takes to do their jobs. The president is Our hunt took us to a man who loves Cadillacs, customized with mag wheels. On the caddy owner's website, he calls himself Goldfinger. Is we know that Michael Francis Sheehan owns Debt Advisory International, which manages vulture companies run out of the British Virgin Islands, including one called Donegal, which is soon Zambia. It's quite a complex web, and we hope Sheehan, Goldfinger, would untangle it for us, but he wouldn't grant us an interview. So we thought we'd say hello to him while on his morning stroll through the wooded suburbs of Washington. <laughs> Greg Palace, the BBC television news I just want to ask you, Mr. Sheehan, um, why are you squeezing the poor nation of Zambia for $40 million? Doesn't that make you a vulture? No comment. I'm in litigation. It's not my my. Well, you've been avoiding this question. Aren't you just profiteering off the good work of people who are trying to save lives by cutting the debt of these poor nations? No, there was a uh, proposal for investment. But that's all I can talk about. A British court is about to rule on whether the Goldfinger-linked companies will walk away with $40 million from the Zambian government. I asked an advisor to Zambia's president what this judgment means to a nation where the average wage is a dollar a day. If these bondholders get their $40 million, what does that mean to Zambia? The kind of money we are talking about in excess of $40 million is literally wiping out Zambia's annual savings arising from debt relief. Sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great and turn to the debt crisis for the poorest countries. Celebrities and pop stars campaigned for 10 years for debt relief. And the wealthier nations responded. A child dies completely unnecessarily as a result of extreme poverty every three seconds. Speculators, the vultures, realized they could make massive profits off everyone else's generosity by diverting into their own pockets the debt relief meant for the poor. You look at an animal, the meat's all been picked off, the country seems bankrupt, and these guys can double, triple, or make even more on their money. Debt relief is actually just clearing a path for the vultures to walk in right behind them. Here's how the vultures got Zambia. In 1979, Romania lent them $15 million. By 1998, Zambia was broke. So Romania offered to write off the entire debt for just $3 million. But before the deal was final, a vulture swooped in and somehow snatched Romania's cheap offer for his own company. Michael Sheehan and his associates are now suing Zambia, not for the $3 million they paid, but for the original debt plus interest, $42 million.
but even bigger money is to be made in the U.S. courtrooms, where Sheehan and others are asking for hundreds of millions of dollars from several desperately poor nations. And George Bush can put an end to it all with a stroke of a pen. Under the U.S. Constitution, the president has the power to stop the vultures from collecting a penny in a U.S. courtroom. But he hasn't done it, even though just last month, George Bush publicly committed his government to debt relief. And let us continue to support the expanded trade and debt relief that are the best hope for lifting lives and eliminating poverty. To ensure that President Bush won't put his words into action, the debt speculators will need political clout. The money trail has led us up Pennsylvania Avenue to this building right up close to George Bush's house. Sheehan's operation, Debt Advisory International, paid a quarter million dollars a year to this outfit for their political advice and access until they got into a bit of trouble. These are the offices of Goldfinger's former lobbyists, once the most powerful in Washington until one of their partners was caught bribing a couple politicians. Jack Abramoff was recently sentenced to five years in prison for the bribery. His partners at the firm of Greenberg Traurig use more traditional legal means to stay tight with President Bush and Republican power brokers. Well, the White House is just on the other side of this park. You ever get over there? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> These are the agencies and places we have to go to uh, help our clients do what they want to do. And many others besides Goldfinger and crew were doing it. Preying on third world debt is a global industry with dozens of players worth hunting. I've decided to get out of town because I've heard there's an even bigger flock of vultures up north. Here in New York City. One hot dog, please. Welcome to the Empire State. Home with World Trade. Home of Biggie Small. Rockefeller headquarters. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm a BK bro. Here. They are feeding on poor nations all over the globe. 36th floor, Elliott Associates, home of billionaire Paul Singer. Singer practically invented the Vulture Fund. In 1996, he bought up some of Peru's debt for $11 million, then threatened to bankrupt Peru if they didn't give him $58 million. He got his $58 million. Then Singer bought some discounted debt from Congo Brazzaville, for only about $10 million. His company then sued Congo and turned the $10 million into $127 million. But that still wasn't enough. I'm right here, in fact, at, at 712 Fifth Avenue. Okay. Is there any time or any place where uh, I can meet with Mr. Singer? Absolutely no way ever. Singer's company says the Congo government is corrupt and hid assets from creditors. Courts have agreed, allowing Singer to seek triple damages under U.S. racketeering law. They could get $400 million. Not bad for a $10 million bet. Congo was counting on George Bush to use his legal authority to stop Singer's court action. That hasn't happened. Paul Singer is the number one donor to George Bush and the Republican cause in New York City. In the run-up to the 2000 election, he gave them 300000 In 2004, he gave them $1.2 million, including money for the so-called Swift Boat campaign, which smeared the war record of George Bush's opponent. His spokesman told us, we have nothing to hide. We just don't do interviews. Back in London, in this courthouse, the government of Zambia alleges that Goldfinger paid a bribe, $2 million to the previous president of Zambia to make sure they'd collect. And we've obtained this email. It says that they will collect more money from Zambia in return for a donation to, quote, the president's favorite charity. President at the time was Frederick Chaluba. He's now on trial on wide-ranging charges of corruption. As it happens, Goldfinger's old lobbyists are also experts on bribery law, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. 